This is ChestertonRadio.com. International Silver Company presents The Silver Theater. Starring Rosalind Russell and James Stewart in Up From Darkness, directed by Conrad Nagel. Brought to you in behalf of two of the greatest names in silverware, International Sterling, world-famous solid silver, and 1847 Rogers Brothers, America's finest silver plate. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Conrad Nagel. I want to welcome you to the fourth of the new series of Silver Theater Dramatic Productions. In weeks to come, you'll hear such stars as Francho Tone, Helen Hayes, Ginger Rogers, Betty Davis, and Clark Gable, playing in stories by America's foremost authors. Today, we are proud to welcome back to Silver Theater MGM's brilliant stars, Rosalind Russell and James Stewart, in the first episode of Up From Darkness, a two-part radio play especially adapted for us by True Boardman, from an original story by Grover Jones. Our town is Middleton, in the heart of America's great coal mining region. Our people, a girl called Michael, played by Rosalind Russell, and a boy called Tim, played by James Stewart. Hey, Mom, you hear that? The old pipe organ of prosperity. Work tomorrow. Oh, sure, it is fine music, Tim. Now, Mom, where's my clean shirt? On the table. Oh, oh yeah, I got it. <laughs> Say, you'll never guess who I saw in town, Timmy. Who? Oh. Michael Gargan. Well, the boss? Well, who didn't see him? Didn't they come down on the mine every day? Oh, no, not him. Her, his daughter. Mickey? Mm, she come back from college just this morning. I saw her in Coburn. No. Yes. Well, what do you know? She's back, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Mom, you can start supper. I'm all washed up now. So Mickey's back. Well, what's what? What she look like? What'd she say? What's she? She still got those freckles? <laughs> She's got no freckles now, Tim. Or if she has, you can't see them. What, Mickey Gargan and no freckles? Hey, what's? Well, uh... just remember, Tim boy, four years at college can make a lot of difference in a girl. Oh, and now don't pester me. I got to get supper on the table. Your brother will walk in here, star. Oh, no, there's plenty of time. He hasn't even finished shot firing yet. I can tell because Joe he... shot firing. Oh yeah, sure. Didn't he tell you? Yeah, Pud Llewellyn got hurt yesterday, and yeah, he lit a short fuse and didn't make it to the breakthrough in time. So they had to have a new shot fire. So Joe's it. So I, I thought he told you. No, he didn't. Well, hey, Mom, why that long look? It's a break for Joe. What means more pay? Besides, you know, Mike Gargan said he wanted Joe to work every job in the mine. But that boss got real plans for Joe, yeah, Mom. Yeah, I know. This... I know. Well, besides, somebody got to blast out the coal for us. Who can do the job better than Joe? <laughs> That's right. Nobody. Hey, you know what? I'll bet if we give a listen, we'll be able to hear some of the shots he sets off down there. Now, the last rooms he'll be firing in are Nielsen's and Hughes's, and they're in the new rooms just off Main North. I pulled a trip down there today, and I was saying to myself, I said, I'll bet this entry is so close under our house that if I sing loud enough, Mom will be hearing me up there, you know? Oh, Tim Barlow, <laughs> 700 feet down and you talk about... Ah, you're crazy as a blind dog in a meat house. Listen, what'd I tell you? That's, that's in Nielsen's room. I bet my shirt on it. Now there'll be, let's see, there'll be two more shots in Nielsen's and four in Hughes's. Six more shots and you can put on the stake. Joe will be up before it's done. Mom, did you hear me? Yes, Timmy, I heard you. Six, did you say? Then that's one of them. Oh, hey, Mom, look, what's happened to you? You're getting jittery because Joe sets off a few shots? Uh, I'll get used to it, like I get used to everything. Two. Now, Mom, now quit it, will you? Joe knows how to take care of himself. Come on, now tell me more about Mickey. Hmm? Ah, uh, never you mind about Miss Michael Gargan. Just because you went to high school together, you don't need to think Ah, oh, Mom, you're dove. I'm not thinking anything. Well, I think I'll go down to the temple and meet Joe when he comes up. And, oh, Mom, uh, press my good pants for tomorrow, will you? <laughs> All right, Tim. 
free. Four. Oh, gosh, oh, I've missed you. Well, how about me? Yeah, let me look at you. Well, are they all through with you up at that school? Well, I'm through with them. How about it? You think you got your money's worth? Well, I'm not sure yet. Of course, I'm not exactly used to the idea of a gargan being so darned educated. Never happened before. Well, it gives me time, and I'll live it down. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, you're just in time to help, Dad. That crayon portrait of Uncle Joseph has leered at us about 20 years too long. Down it comes. It's the beginning of the revolution. Oh, is it? It is. First the pictures come down, and then that stove out of the middle of the living room. I'm going to make this place livable, Dad. I'm going to do now, the Hold on, thing. wait a minute. You're going to do nothing of the kind. Now, Mike Gargan, just because you own a coal mine, you don't have to live like a mule skinner. No? Now, you listen to me, young woman. Every man in this town calls me by my first name. And it's going to stay that but way. But, Dad, that still doesn't mean your house has to look like a museum. This place is almost as out of date as, uh, as your mind. Now, never mind the mind. Stick to something you know something about. I do know something about it. I know that 70 men have been killed down there in the last five years, and that other men are being injured there every day. All right. What are they worth? Well, maybe being your daughter, I think something ought to be done about it. Yeah, I suppose you'll be doing it. You probably had a very fine college course on problems of the miners or something. Now you've come home and tell me how to run things. <laughs> Yeah, that's swell. Of course, the mere fact that you've never been down in the mine, that doesn't make any that's difference. That's not fair, Dad. I... Oh. oh, what's the matter with us? I'm home an hour, and we're right where we left off when I went away. Battling about the mine. Yeah, you're right. It's my fault. I, I'm sorry, girl. Dad, while I was away, I thought about this a lot. Let's, let's talk it out, hmm? All right, Michael. First of all... What you said about my never being down in the mine, having gone down into it, well, uh, I would have a long time ago accepted I... That uh... you're free. Yeah. I know that, girl. I've always known it. But I don't think you know why, Dad. You know, the very first thing I remember as a kid, it was the shriek of that wildcat whistle that means a new disaster somewhere down there under the ground. Even before I was old enough to understand, I sensed the horror and terror that lay behind that sound. Sure, I know, girl. I, I can't tell you what it did to me. The dread it gave me, the, the thought of being part of something that could destroy so many lives. That's why I came to hate the mind, Dad. And I do hate it. But there's something else that I hate even more. That's letting you down. <laughs> you see, I've, I've always let you down. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Michael is a boy's name, Dad. Oh, you made yourself pretend that you were glad I was a girl. And you called me Michael anyway. But that couldn't make me another Mike Gargan. To grow up in the mine and to love it as you've loved it. Oh, you're crazy. No, I'm not, Mike. And because of that, I want you to know that I'm going to do something about the way I feel toward the mine. Sure, I'm afraid of it. I'm petrified of it. But I'll lick that fear, Mike. I've got to going to. But look, Miss Michael, it's no good for you just hang around mine all day. It's all right, Jan. But what'd you do here? Just standing hours and look at mine. In your face, it... You feel sick, maybe? No, no, Jan, it's all right. Maybe you're here to wait for somebody, huh? No, no, never mind, Jan, please. Tell me, that bunch of miners who came up in the cage, was that the last load for today? I mean, I mean, is there no one left working down there now? No, one more load. There, cage just come up now. This last one. I don't care to be done. Check for 40 years. 250 Good night, boys. Well, I just feel differently about the whole thing. He sort of set the world on fire or something. Good well, night, Jan. Night, Tim. Mickey. Well, Mickey, how are you? Tim. Tim Barlow. 
Gee, it's great to see you, Mickey. I, I heard you were back. Mom told me you were. Come on, let's... Come on, sit over here in this crate. Here, I'll dust it off for you. you say, you, you look swell. You sure do. How, how was that college business? College? Oh, it was fine. Hey, you, you feeling all right? Y yes, yes, Tim. Well, you're waiting for your dad, huh? No. No, no, I just came down to see the mine. To see the mine? Uh -huh. You? Gee, as far back as I can remember, you always wanted to stay just as far away from the mine as you could get. You... Tim, you, uh, you've changed. I, I didn't recognize you. Oh, yeah. Well, it's pretty hard to keep clean. Don't no, I? it isn't you know. your face, Tim. Or your clothes or anything like that. It's... Oh, you used to be taller. Why do you stoop over like that? Well, I, you just get used to it, I guess. You Down in the oh, tunnels, you know. You... I see. <laughs> so you're still here, working down there, I mean. Just like all the rest of them. Going down there every morning before dawn, coming out every afternoon. Well, what do you mean? Well, sure, I'm still in the mine. Why shouldn't I be? Say, I'm a skinner now, Mickey. But it's four years, Tim. Surely in four years you've had time to find something better than working down in that blackness. I mean, a job where you could accomplish something. What do you mean? I am accomplishing something. I helped get that black stuff out of there, and you know what that stuff does? It makes light for people and heat, and it runs factories, and it's a kind of magic, that stuff is. It's like that lamp that guy, Aladdin, what's his name, had. Why don't I accomplish something like, like that? Tim, hmm. take me down in the mine. Take you down the mine? Now. I want to see it and know it and feel it. All of it. The shaft, every entry, oh, every room. Oh, now, wait out. That doesn't make sense, Mickey. You're scared to death of going down there. I know that. That doesn't matter, Tim. Believe me, I've got to go down there. If I'm scared, I'll get over it. I've got to, Tim. My name is Michael Gargan. Oh, yeah, you're... Yeah. Oh, I don't think I get it. I... But, Mickey, your dad will probably... Dad didn't know. I'd rather he didn't until... Until I've licked it, Tim. Oh, please. Please, Tim, take me down. All right, Mickey. It's all sort of crazy, but... If it really matters to you, I'll do it. I'll take you down. <laughs> You just heard Act One of the first episode of Up From Darkness starring Rosalind Russell and James Stewart. Before the second act starts, a young man steps from behind the silver curtain with a grateful word for living in this generation. John Conti. We don't talk about it very much, but I think at heart we all realize how fortunate we are to be living in a generation that makes it so easy for us all to enjoy the finer things of life. Take that most cherished of women's possessions... Lavish sterling silver, solid silver through and through. Today, modern methods of silversmithing, modern skill and craftsmanship have brought solid silver within the reach of nearly everyone. For example, do you know that right now you can get an individual place setting in International Sterling's thrilling, enchantress pattern, six distinctive pieces of solid silver for only $16.75? Well, you can. And believe me, Enchantress is a pattern of incredible beauty. It's modern in its graceful sweeping lines and exquisite proportions, and yet it's romantic, too, in the delicate bit of carving at either side. But see Enchantress at your silverware dealers tomorrow. When you do, when you realize that here is silver loveliness that will never fade, when you find out for how little and on what easy terms you can own the solid silver you've always longed for, I know you are going to own International Sterling's Enchantress. And now the curtain is rising on the concluding act of the first episode of Up From Darkness, starring Rosalind Russell as Michael and James Stewart as Tim. The time and scene are the same. I don't know, Tim. 
Well, there are no visitors in mind when shot firing going on. Ah, but, Jan, we won't go where Joe's working. Please, Jan, it's all right. Uh, your father will know you go down in mine? Well, no, but he doesn't need to know. Please, Jan. Well, okay. You get on cage, I send you down. Okay, Jan. Come on, Mickey. Oh, wait. Oh, wait till I get my cap. Hold on a minute, Jan. All right, Tim. Here, you better wear one, too. Thank you. Uh, hold still while I light your pit lamp. Now I'll light yours for you. Okay. Hey, your hand's shaking there. I think maybe I'd better light it myself. Now. Okay, Jan. Okay, Tim. Down you go. Pretty fast, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I should have warned Jan to run it slow. But what, what happened? Oh, no, that's just a little too much speed. The cable's flapped, that's all. There ought to be something to hold on to in this cage. It's not safe like this. I mean, it should be all closed no, in. No, no, it's it. okay, it's okay when you get used to it. Now, if your ears feel funny, try yawning. That, that always does the trick. What, what's that? Now, it just hit the bottom of the shaft. Here, it's soaking. Oh, sure, yeah. I didn't think of that. That's seepage. It's always like that. Of course, it's not so good on those shoes. Oh, that doesn't matter. You see, up in there. Oh, so, what? Be careful. Be careful. Gosh, you almost walked into that lead wire. That 1,200 volts on that circuit. You mean a wire like that is left exposed in this darkness? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, everybody knows where it is. And besides. Uh, Jim! A... What? There, just now, I saw something. Move. Oh, yeah, well, that's just a little rat. There's a lot of them down here that they won't hurt you. Come on, I uh, think you better take hold of my arm. Yes, maybe I better have. And keep your head down when you're walking along. See better now? Yes, I think so. Sure you can. Uh-huh. You know, I know a miner who would never wear a cap when he works. You know what he used for light? What? Lightning bugs. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, he used to go out the night before and capture just one lightning bug, put it in the bottle. And then the next day, he'd bring it down here. He'd work with that light all day. And then one day, the lightning bug fainted, and then he couldn't see it all. Hey, uh, you were supposed to laugh at that. That's some joke, right? I guess I, I don't feel much like laughing right now. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I can just try. Tim... Those things up there, what do you call them? Well, they're cap pieces. But they look loose. Yeah, so they do. What if they give way? The roof caves right in. Does it do that often? Yeah, every now and then. How can you just pass it off like that? If the shaft does fall in, it means... It means... Tim, aren't you afraid yourself? Afraid? I don't know. I never thought about it very much. I guess if I did, I might be. You see, Mickey, you, you get used to that down here. All these things that bother you, they're, they're just part of our job. Even men being killed? Even that. Now, look, Mickey, can't you understand? No, no, I can't understand. It's horrible down here. Even worse than I imagined. The dark, the cold, the dampness, as if that weren't enough. Oh, Jim! Ah! It's all right. It's all right, Mickey. I should have warned you. Those are the shot fires. Now, Joe, my brother, is blasting out coal for the men to load tomorrow. Oh, I... I'm sorry, I... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I should have warned you. Mickey, don't you want to go back up? No. No, I'm all right. Let's go on. Jan? Jan? Huh? Oh, Mike. Uh, hello, Mike. It's you, huh? <laughs> hello, Mike. Hello, Jan. Uh, this is one fine day, Mike. That's right. Yeah, no rain. No? No, it's, it's a fine day, Mike. 
Hey, what's the matter with you? I didn't come down here to talk about the weather. I'm going down. Get over there and drop the cage. Well, you go down to the mine, Mike? But, uh, but Joe's down there, Mike. Joe shot firing. I know that. That's why I'm going. Good lad, Joe, but still new on that job, and I don't want to take any chances with him. Yeah, but, Mike, I think maybe... Hey, listen, Jan. I don't pay you to think. I pay you to run these cages. Now, get over there and drop me down and move. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, sure, Mike. Sure. Now, that's what we're coming to, Mickey, is a part, and that's where the... Oh. Oh, I've just got to get used to those. I uh, sure you will. Hey, you dropped your cap. Oh, oh yes. Here, here. Boy, you... You don't look much like four years of college now, Miss Gary. <laughs> Hold still. I swear I'll get that smudge off. There. Thanks. You're... You're swell, you know that? Mickey, uh, I... Maybe this isn't the time or place to tell you, but I... Well, all the time you were away, going all sorts of places with all sorts of people and... Well, I was right here. And I was thinking about just one person. Timmy. Of course, you may not think that you've ever been down here before, but I want to tell you you have, Mickey. You've been riding around down in here for years with me. Oh, I'm glad, Timmy. True, I'm... Tim, I left! They're going out! Hey, Tim, down there where Joe is. Come on! Gargan, your father, and your brother, Tim, they're in there, caught in a fall. Dad! Aye, he just come down to inspect. The shot went off and the roof fell in. They're caught in there, both of them. No, no! Mickey, wait. Are all the shots fired off, John? I don't know. We'll take a chance. You stay here, Mickey. I won't. I'm coming with you. We've got to get them out. <laughs> We'll get him free. Oh, no, Michael, girl. It's no use. Just, just let me lie. Oh, Dad. Okay. <laughs> you, you picked a swell time to finally come in the mine. Darling, I... Tim, Tim, listen. I, this messes things up. I, I counted on Joe to keep things going. Help Michael. She needs help. She she doesn't know the mine like like we do. She don't worry, Mike. Oh. Do you hear that? Michael girl. Mike. First name. Oh, remember what I told you. When they call you by your first name, you're okay. Even even if you <laughs> Easy, easy, easy. No use. No use. My father's dead. Can't you understand that? My God. My father's dead. Yeah. And so was my brother. So was my father almost like this two years ago. You. You just stand there, not even cry, not say anything. Just accept this. The mine, Mickey, it'll always be the mine. For me someday. And for you, too, unless you stay up above where women belong. Why did my father die, Tim? For what good reason? That passage could have been braced and safe, strong enough for a hundred glass slides. Mickey, listen to me. It's not just death. 
This one, Joe, and your father. It's for all the others who have died and still others who will die if this place has its ways, Mickey. Look at it. Live wires left exposed and cables unprotected and cages that are death traps in themselves. You're talking wild. You don't know what you're oh, saying. Oh, yes, Mickey. I know. This mine belongs to me now. And I'm going to fight it. I know that I can fight this monster that you and all the others just accept. I'll fight it alone if no one else will help me. But I'll make it pay for Michael Gargan's death. If it's the only thing I ever do in life, I'll beat this mine. In just a moment, you'll hear about what's in store for you in next week's episode of Up From Darkness, starring Rosalind Russell and James Stewart. But right now, here's a man to offer you something very special. John Conti. For many of you, this fall holds a really gala occasion. The day when someone in your family or one of your friends, someone you hold very dear, walks up the church aisle in veil and orange blossoms to the romantic strains of Lohengrin. And if you'd like to make your wedding gift to that bride as memorable as the occasion, you'll give the gift of every woman's dreams, beautiful silverware, Solid silver, like the international sterling silver we spoke about earlier in the program, or the finest in silver plate, 1847 Rogers Brothers, First Love. First Love, so named by Rosalind Russell, one of the stars of our silver theater performance tonight, represents the latest and greatest achievement of the famous house of 1847 Rogers Brothers. It's a pattern whose lovely ornament is deeply etched and raised in high relief, in a perfection of craftsmanship never before available in silver plate. You can see this sensational pattern at your silverware dealers now. In fact, in order that you may see it, 1847 Rogers Brothers are making a special offer of a small distinctive serving fork. A fork which ordinarily costs a dollar and a half, but which you can now have for only 25 cents. When you go to your silverware dealer tomorrow for your fork... When you actually see its rare, rich beauty, I know you'll not only want a complete first love service for the bride, you'll want one for yourself, too. And you can have one easily. Your silverware dealer will tell you on what really convenient terms you can own the aristocrat of silver plate, 1847 Rogers Brothers' First Love. that way, all the shot firers go that way. It gets them. But you can't do these things, Mickey. It's mining. You'll break yourself against it, Mickey. And Miss Gargan, we miners ain't stepping back into the shaft until them machines of yours come out. Let it destroy all of you. Stand by and watch it while it kills. But I won't. I'll destroy it, do you hear? I'll destroy it! This is the fight that Michael Gargan must wage. Not alone against the terror that she feels, but against the very people she would raise up from darkness. Next week at the same time, the Silver Theater will star Rosalind Russell and James Stewart in the concluding episode of Up From Darkness, directed by Conrad Nagel, with original music scored and conducted by Felix Mills. And in the meantime, if you want solid silver, you want international sterling. If you want silver plate, you want 1847 Rogers Brothers, both proudly created by International Silver Company. Rosalind Russell will next be seen in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer production, The Citadel. James Stewart can next be seen in the MGM production, Ice Follies. This is John Conti speaking.
This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. You are listening to Chesterton Radio at ChestertonRadio.com. International Silver Company presents The Silver Theater. Starring Rosalind Russell and James Stewart in Up From Darkness, directed by Conrad Nagel. Brought to you in behalf of two of the greatest names in silverware, International Sterling, world-famous Solid Silver, and 1847 Rogers Brothers, America's finest silver plate. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Conrad Nagel. We welcome you to the fifth of the new series of Silver Theater dramatic productions. In weeks to come, you'll hear such stars as Francho Tone, Helen Hayes, Ginger Rogers, Betty Davis, and Clark Gable, playing in stories by America's foremost authors. Today, we're proud to welcome back to Silver Theater Metro Goldwyn Mayer's brilliant stars, Rosalind Russell and James Stewart, in the concluding episode of Up From Darkness a two-part radio play especially adapted for us by True Boardman from an original story by Grover Jones. And now the lights are being dimmed and our curtain rises. It was just three months ago that Michael Gargan's father died, died the quick, dark death of disaster in a mine. And since that day, she's lived for but one purpose, to beat the mine that killed him, to rob it of the power to take men's lives. This is the task that faces Michael Gargan, played by Rosalind Russell, a task in which he has one strong ally, Tim Barlow, played by James Stewart. Our scene, the head office of the mine, early one evening. Michael is conferring with Mr. Melvin, the head bookkeeper. Miss Gargan, if I hadn't worked for your father for 30 years, I wouldn't say this. But if you want to have a mind to run, you've got to stop throwing money away on them machines. Throwing it away? Did it ever occur to you, Mr. Melvin, that the safety of the Gargan mine might mean more to me than the surplus in the B- Gargan bank account? You can't run a business on sentimentality, Miss Gargan. This is a coal mine, not a charity institution. Dangerous, perhaps it is. But mining is always dangerous. Your father accepted that fact all his life. Yes, he did, and because he did, he... We won't argue, Mr. Melvin. Please see that the orders for the new motorized equipment are put through immediately. You, you mean you're actually going to... Oh, hello, Mickey. Oh, hello, Tim. Look, I've been trying... I'll be through in just a minute. Oh, hello, Melvin. Huh. Now, here's the month's balance, Miss Gargan. If you can call it that, considering it's written mostly in red ink. Thank you. I'll go now. Mrs. Melvin's been waiting dinner for an hour. I'm sorry. I, I know the change here has been hard on everybody. But things will adjust themselves in time. I hope so. Good night. Good night. My old sourpuss. Look, Mickey, do you have to keep working 16 hours every day? I've been trying all afternoon. Excuse me. Oh. Hello? Who? Oh, Mr. Wyrick. Fine, thank you. How's the Wyrick Coal Company? Yes, Mr. Wyrick. No, I'm sorry. I happen to feel that that's my own business and no one else's. I see. And if I don't? Well, you may as well understand this, Mr. Wyrick. If making the Gargan mine safe means running it at a loss, I'll run it at a loss. Good night. What now? Oh, Mr. Wyrick over in Hastings is up in arms about the improvements I'm making. Says it's unfair competition and he's going to do something about it. Oh, it's not so good. Don't worry, Mickey. Now, he's just, he's just talking. Oh, I don't care, Tim. I'm winning. Wyrick or anyone else can say what they please, but I'm doing it. I'm sticking the mine. Do you realize there hasn't been one person killed, not a serious injury since Dad, in over three months? Yeah, 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 that's, that's swell. But think of a record like that, Tim, even before the job is finished. And by the time we've installed the rest of the equipment I've ordered, now, Mickey, we'll be well on our way. Mickey, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Now, those machines and safety devices. Yes, Tim? Well, they... Well, now, never mind now. Hey, uh, your face is dirty again. 
Ain't this time, I think. Here, I'll fix it. You know, since you turned working woman, you can manage to get your face smudged up more. Crazy. Tim? Yeah. Tim, I... Uh... I've got to check this balance. Oh, look, Mickey, it'd work out swell, you know it? We could drive over to Sheridan and then go for a week at Bryant Falls. I got quite a lot saved up, and besides, I got an uncle in Dubuque who's going to leave me 3000 bucks, and he just wrote Mom last week that he's feeling pretty low. And Tim! Make... Wait a minute. Is this supposed to be a proposal? Yeah, I guess that's what you'd call it. Oh, Tim, I really... I... You see, Mickey, I, I sort of think maybe your dad would like to know that somebody was taking care of you. You know, a woman on her own can manage to get herself mixed up in more darn jams, especially what? if she's sort of bullheaded. And uh, no, well, no, I don't know. Miss Gargan, Miss Gargan. Hello, Jan. Miss Gargan, I just here, so I come quick tell you tonight at Miners Hall meeting. Well, go on, Jan. What kind of meeting? Men from mine, Miss Gargan. They meet to talk what they do about changes you make in mind. Everybody be there. I think you want to know. Thanks, John. Thanks for telling me. Okay. You do something, maybe, huh? It's not so good, Miss Gargan. I know, Jan. I know. Good night. Good night. Night, Tim. You knew about this, didn't you, Tim? I guess I did. And that was the reason for your... Uh... A proposal? Oh, not the reason. Maybe it's sort of, uh, sort of rushed it a little. I see. Now, look, Mickey, this is serious, honest. Now, you've been up here in the office. You don't know how the men have been feeling. It started as soon as you began making changes down there, and it's been getting worse all the time. There's no telling what will happen at that meeting. No tonight. matter what happens, Tim, it can't make any difference. I started this fight, and I'm going to finish it. Mickey, you still haven't answered me. Will you marry me? But don't you see, I can't answer that now, Tim. I can't, believe me, not until I've... until I've finished this job. Oh, but, Tim, ask me again, will you? Uh, no matter what happens to your uncle in Dubuque... been waiting to see just what a bunch looked like that could go on working in a woman's mind. I'm surprised at you. Some of you have even got your hands dirty. <laughs> now listen to me, you guys. Any sap knows that a woman around a mine is unlucky. And they don't make them any unluckier than Miss Michael Gargan. Look at all these fancy machines she shoved in down at the mine. Do you like all that junk? No, uh, of course you don't. And here's something else. Just wait a while till these fancy machines get really working. One by one, you'll find yourselves getting fired. The machines will be doing the work. That's right, you're right. Yeah, not only some of you are going to be out of a job, you'll all be out. Six more months of that highfalutin gal boss and this mine will shut down. You'll all be in the street. Yeah, your wives and your kids will be hungry. But that don't matter. Miss Gargan don't care about them. She only cares about... Slocum, yeah. that's a dirty line, you know it. I've been waiting for you to blow off, Barlow. Now, listen to me, you guys. This bird Slocum doesn't live here, he doesn't work here, and I'll tell you what he is. He's a hired agitator from the Wyrick mine over at Hastings. Oh, yeah? Well, how does it feel to be promoted, Barlow? A mule skinner one day and a boss foreman the next. Having a gal for a boss may be unlucky for everybody else. But it's sure all right for you. Why, you low? Look out, Slogan. Right. Right. Get away. Let him up. Come on. Get back, you guys. Nice going, Barlow. Socking a man when he's not looking. You were looking then, you're looking now. Come on. Now, look here. There's no hits in the no place. Let go of me. Get out. Take it easy. There'll be none of that here, Barlow. Now, listen to me. Listen, all of you. Now, don't pay any attention to this guy. Don't be crazy. Look at what Mickey Gargan's trying to do. Suppose she has spent dough on those machines. It wasn't for herself, was it? And if she fired anybody, no, and she's not gonna. Now give her a chance. She's only had three months. She's worked her head off. She's... Mickey. Hey, look. Who's in charge of this meeting? 
You, Mr. Saunders? Uh, yes, Miss Gargan, but... Uh... I'd like to say something to the men myself. Well, this is a miners' meeting, ma'am, and according to the rules, an operator Then I'm can't... going to break your rule. Men, I... I heard most of what Mr. Slocum said a moment ago. And there are some things I want you to understand. He said I wanted to take your jobs away. That's not true. What I'm trying hey, to do boy, is for your own good. Rules, hey, I want you to... No operators speak to a meeting unless they're invited. No. Well, what are we waiting come for? Come on, let's go. Let's the meeting be adjourned. Yeah, come, come on, on, boys, come on. You can all go down the street to Chambers. Please. Wait a minute, come please. On, Can't you listen to me? Hey, now, what's I the want... matter with all of you? Give her a break. Wait a minute. It doesn't matter, Tim. I'm sorry, Miss Gargan. Nothing I can do. Such fools they are. Thanks, John. It's all right. I go back to mine. Good night. Oh, Mickey, you shouldn't have come here. I see that now, Tim. But we'll win them over. I know we will. What we're doing is for their own good, and, and as long as you believe in me, as long as you'll help me... Quit it, will you? Well, what's wrong, Tim? I'm a liar, that's all. Now, look, Mickey. I'd lick any other man that says it, but it's true. You're wrong. And if you keep on the way you are, you'll wreck the mine. Tim! You've gone about it with your eyes shut. Those men have always dug coal in just one way. It's part of their life, and now you want to change that life. Well, you can't, Mickey. Believe me. You're not a miner. You can't understand. Wait a minute, Tim. There's just one thing I want to know. Are you helping me finish what I started, or aren't you? I can't, Mickey. Not the way you're doing it. For your own sake, I can't. You're going to... You're going to... That's enough. So I've gone about it with my eyes shut, have I? Well, maybe you're right. I was blind. I was blind enough to think that you, at least, could understand. To think that what you asked me this afternoon meant... Mickey, please, now listen to me. Why? Why should I listen to you? I wouldn't understand. You're a minor. I'm not. We speak a different language. Fear and suffering and death, they're not the same things to you. I'm me. only trying to make you see it straight. Will you go now, please? Mickey. Go on with the rest of them to Chambers Hall. Mickey, go just... on, leave me alone. I'll do it alone, Dad. I'll do it anyway. I said I'd make the mine pay for your death, and I will. So help me. I'll do it alone. just heard Act One of the second episode of Up From Darkness, starring Rosalind Russell and James Stewart. And now, before we bring you Act Two, we bring you a passing comment on today's styles. Many of the fashions women follow today reflect the subtle blending of old and new, of your grandmother's day and your day. And in silverware, too, you find the same fascinating combination of romantic tradition and modern art. Particularly is this true of International Sterling's bewitching pattern, Enchantress. For the lustrous mirror-clear center panel is truly modern. The delicate carving at either side just is truly romantic. A pattern all the more desirable because it's solid silver. Silver that grows richer, mellower as time goes on. And yet this exquisite silverware is not the luxury you might think. For example, you can get a place setting for one person in the Enchantress pattern... Six distinctive pieces of solid silver for only $16.75. And there are other larger services also priced within your reach. What's more, there's a budget payment plan whereby you can buy your sterling silver right out of income. Your silverware dealer will be delighted to tell you all about it. See him tomorrow. See Enchantress, too. And begin now to make a dream come true. To own solid silver by International Sterling. Now the final act of Up From Darkness. There are three in Middletown who have known a sleepless night. First, Michael, desolate and alone in the Gargan house on the hill, knowing that now she can expect no help in her struggle against the miners and against the mine itself. Next, Tim walking the streets while blackness turns to dawn, bitterly unhappy at his action in deserting Michael. And third, 
Tim's mother, who has waited through an endless night for his return. And then at last in the Barlow home, just after seven in the morning. Tim, boy. Come, Mom. They've been waiting for your son. Is something wrong? I'm leaving, Mom. Leaving? Don't ask me why. I just got to. So you're just like all the rest of them. Or maybe worse. At least they're not running out. You don't understand. Oh, don't I, though? Just because the men all called a strike, you ain't got the courage. Right. Uh, don't tell me you don't know. Last night at Chambers Hall, they voted not to go to work this morning or any morning, as long as Michael Gargan is in charge. Yeah. Yeah, I see. So long, Mom. Go on with you, then. And I'm not so sure about what she's well rid of you. Oh, don't talk like that. You're a fool, Tim Barlow. And I'm ashamed of you. What do you want me to do? Do? I want you to stay here and fight for the girl you love. I did fight for her, Mom. I'd keep on if she was right. But... If she was right. She is right. Do you think that Mickey Gargan is the only woman in Middleton who wants safety in the mine? But the men, Mom. The men are fools, like you. They don't like changes because they've always worked another way. It's humbug. Let them learn, I say. Oh, you still don't understand. A woman just can't run a mark. Why can't she? So Michael's wrong, is she? Well, I'll tell you how she's wrong. She hasn't learned to tell that bunch of numbskulls where to go. Mom, Mickey's a girl, remember. She can't. Why can't she? She's a Gargan, isn't she? My Gargan called every man in this town by his first name, and vice versa. And when she learns that and a few cuss words, you just watch her run that mine. Mom. Sock me one, will you? Go on, sock me. I never needed it more, but I'm not starting that now. Ah, oh, Tim. I couldn't be seeing you throw away your heart and your life. Oh, God bless you, Mom. You... Go on with you now. Get on and find your girl. <laughs> What time is it now, Jan? Twenty after seven. I see. But maybe still not strike. Maybe mine is just late, huh? All of them, Jan. All twenty minutes late. Jan, why didn't you strike too? Why do you stay at the mine? Me? Me top man. Keep the fan going in mine. But anyway, Jan not strike. Mike Gargan always good friend to Jan. Jan always good friend to Mike's daughter. With my people. Once friend, always friend. You can't always say that for my people. Oh, you don't worry, Miss Michael. Tim, funny guy. He's kind of crazy like all Americans, but Jan. he come back. Oh, you think Jan blind, maybe? Jan, huh? Jan, Jan, please. Please don't talk about Tim. Sure, sure not. You go home now, maybe, huh? No. No, I'm going down in the mine. Down in the mine? I... I want to talk to someone. With the mine empty, Miss... Oh. Oh, you mean down there? Your father? Oh, yeah, I'm Good, maybe you go. Sure. Sure, you just get on cage, I let you down. You got Captain Pete Lamp? Yes, here's one. Boy, I like. That now. You're not scared to go down alone? No. I'm not scared. Good. Miss Michael. Maybe down there. You say hello for the yard. All right, yeah. Down you go.
I had to come and tell you. I've let you down. This, this mine of yours, my kind. I've really fixed it up. I fixed it up so swell that nobody would come work in it. You see, you, you shouldn't have called me Michael after all. I guess we both see that now. the mine without men to work in it. Mike, remember, girl, Mike, if they call you by your first name, you're okay. You're okay. I tried, dear. I tried. But they never will. They never will. Mickey. Jim. Mickey, you shouldn't be down here by yourself. I... I wasn't by myself. Oh, but you... Oh. Oh, yeah, I get it. Do you want me to go, Mickey? No, Tim. After all, your brother's here as much as dead. Yeah. Oh, look, Mickey, I... There's something I want to tell you here. I love you. Oh, Tim. Tim, darling. Mickey, I'm... Oh, don't say any more. Just hold me close. I love you, Tim. I do love you. Well, then that's all that matters. When two people love each other, they're... They're unbeatable. Do you know that? They are, Mickey. And now you and I are going to fight this thing through. Both of us. But it's too late, Timmy. I... I've messed everything up. I've already failed. Failed? What do you mean, failed? Listen, Mickey, you're right. You're right about everything you've done. It's just how you've done it that's been wrong. Why was it wrong, Tim? This mine isn't just yours, Mickey. It's the men's, too. Every one of them feels about it just like Mike Gargan did. And you shouldn't have changed things all at once, Mickey. Not without talking it over with those guys. Don't you see that? But how could I, Tim? I, I was away so long. They're, they're like strangers to me. Oh, don't let them be. They don't want a woman running the mine. Well, don't run it like a woman. Tell them where to head in that, Mickey. And if you run out of words, you just ask me. You gotta stop calling, making them call you Miss Gargan. You gotta make them call them Mike. I know, I know that. Somebody else already told me. And I'll do it. Sure you will. You're gonna fight fire with fire. That's the way we'll let them. Sure we will. Tim, what did you say? I said you gotta fight fire with fire. And we will, Timmy. This strike, it's gonna end now. Today, come on, Tim! Oil catch whistle! At the mine! Something's happened! Let's go! A strike! And I suppose that stops men dying! I'm going to that mine! Safety machines! Listen to that! Something's happened at the mine! I told you it was bad luck to have a woman run a mine. Come on. There's the girl. There for the temple at the head of the shaft. This was all a trick to get you back to work. Oh, no, it's not. Listen to me. You all walked out on me before, but this time you're going to stay and listen. So you're all on strike. None of you like the things I've done to improve the mine. You don't want to work for a woman boss, do you? Oh, why don't you answer? You, Tom Carson, you don't want to work for me, do you? Or you, Luke, or you, Shorty? All right. That's all I want to know. Wait a minute. Listen, everybody. This here gal's trying to call. Now, look, Slogan. Yeah. Mickey's talking here, and you're going to shut up. This is a free country, Barlow. You can't stop me. I can't. Get... Are you looking now? Hey, you got... All right, Mickey, go on. Go to it. Tell us. And now, you women, what about you? I'll tell you what about us. You got no right to scare us with that whistle when nothing's happened. Oh, something's going to happen, Mrs. Novak, unless at least you women back me up. What do you mean, back you up? Why should we? Because you're women. And being women, you can't help but understand the thing I've tried to do. 
Change the mind? Sure, I've changed it. I've changed it to give your men a chance to live down in that hole. Well, what about it? Have you got the courage to tell your sons and husbands to go back to work? So you won't help me. So I have to fight your men alone. Well, that's great. There never was a gargan that didn't like a fight. And boys, you've got one. None of you wants to work in the gargan mine. You'd rather go hungry than work in it. Well, then you're going hungry. Because I hate the mine. With or without improvements, I've always hated it. So I'm going to save us all a lot of trouble. Jan, huh? hand me that piece of timber and open that firebox. Yeah, here, Miss Gargan. Do you see this tipple? Well, it's 40 years old and as dry as tinder. Hey, she's got a torch. Miss Gargan, Miss Gargan, wait. What are you going to do? Do? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to burn the mine. There. There. But the mine's on fire. Oh, you've got to stop her. Hey, she threw a torch down at the tipple. Jack, don't stand there. The mine. Go put it out. And your job. Come on. Oh, go on. Look at him go so they didn't light the mine. Fight fire with fire, ain't you? Ah, Mickey, and you have. Tell him where to go, boy. How you told him. Go work with him now, huh? Sure, why not? Fire almost out now. Pretty soon, men, I'll go back to work. I blow whistle, let town no strike over. Sure, Jan. Let her blow. Go ahead. Okay. And you do one swell job just now. You're them fine boss, Mike. Oh, Timmy. Timmy, I've done it. Did you hear? He called me Mike. Sure he did. And they're all going to be calling you Mike. Did you... Hey, hey. Hey, hey, Mickey. Crying. Hey, you can't cry. You're boss here. I know. I... I just can't help it. You can't help it? You win, so you can't help crying. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Yes, you are. Jan said so. Like all Americans. But, oh, Timmy, crazy or not, I love you. minutes, I'm going to ask Rosalind Russell and James Stewart to come out in front of our silver curtain so that you may meet them in person. But first, here's another friend of yours, John Conti. Ladies and gentlemen, as soon as this program is over, will you go to your buffet drawer and look at your silverware? Is it the kind you can be really proud of, silverware that adds distinction to your dinner table? And just how complete a service have you? Do you own salad forks and coffee spoons? If you're not perfectly satisfied with what you see... Now is the time to replenish the service you have or to buy completely new silverware. Because now you can get solid silver like the international sterling we mentioned a few minutes ago or the finest of silver plate like 1847 Rogers Brothers' First Love at prices you never dreamed possible. First Love is a pattern of really unusual beauty. The floral ornament is deeply etched and richly raised in a perfection of craftsmanship never before found in silver plate. 1847 Rogers Brothers would like you to have a small, distinctive serving fork in this exquisite first love pattern. A fork that sells for one dollar and a half, but which is yours for only 25 cents. By all means, go to your silverware dealer tomorrow and get it. Look at sets of first love while you're there and learn how easily and conveniently you can own the best in silver plate. 1847 Rogers Brothers. And now back to Conrad Nagel. For two persons such as Rosalind Russell and James Stewart, there's only one thing we can do. Ros and Jimmy, here's the microphone and several millions of your fans. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Ros, you start. Well, it's been very nice for both Jimmy and me returning together to the Silver Theater. Ros, you know, this and is I... a lot like the time we were on the Silver Theater last season. You know, you just finished a new picture for Metro Golden Mayor Van and... You've just finished the Citadel for them now. Well, you I... were all banged up from playing football last year. Really banged yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's happened again in the same place. Uh, another football picture, No, Jimmy? no, no, ice skating. Now, for ice falling, this picture MGM has me making now. I, I never knew ice could hit back so hard, you know? <laughs> no, Jimmy, there's one more thing. Even nicer than a return engagement. Conrad has told me how much the people have liked First Love since we introduced it last season. Yeah, yeah, Roz, can I interrupt again? You I know, suppose so. I uh, bought some silver last week, oh, a whole lot of it. Enchantress and First Love, the uh, 
pattern you named, you know, from a new house. Is that mansion of yours finished? No, no, the roof isn't on yet, but I thought I'd start furnishing it in the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. So long. Thank you. Good night, Rosalind Russell and Jimmy Stewart. We'll see you both soon again. Next week, at the same time, the Silver Theater will star Francia Tone with Rita Johnson in the Vivian Bretherton story, Hollywood Legend, directed by Conrad Nagel, with original music scored and conducted by Felix Mills. All the characters and events in today's drama were purely fictional. John Conti speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. for podcasts of works by G.K. Chesterton, plus drama, comedy, mystery, science fiction, big bands, and much more. The soundtrack to your Chesterton day at chestertonradio.com. Do you love sharing the gospel and want to learn to be more effective? Join the St. Paul Street Evangelization Online School of Evangelization. You will learn to build bridges of trust and make disciples by befriending strangers, proclaiming the gospel, inviting people to the church, and praying with others. We'll ask for a pledge of financial support, but if you are unable to give, We'll give you a membership at no cost. Find out more and get involved today at streetevangelization.com. That's streetevangelization.com. Chesterton Radio, the true, good, and beautiful at chestertonradio.com.